Hello everybody on YouTube. Uh, this is Shadowwind that we are playing with. Shadowwind plays for Seafoam and has a pretty big pretty big resume of competitive teams that he has played for at a very, very high level. Um, and in Splatoon 2 was a Tentabrella player. And uh, so we've brought Shadowwind on to teach me what the heck I'm doing wrong on the Tentabrella because there are many things and I could use the help. Yes. Five-star Tentabrella player. Very rare. Um, you said see. that uh, you were interested in maybe coming back to it and trying to push it a little bit. Um, what, t tell me more about that. Like, what do you think that there are things that people aren't doing? Do you think that like there are niches that we haven't considered? Um, the niches for this weapon is pretty much zones and clan blitz only. Um, TC and Rainmaker are practically unviable as the weapon does not function there in those modes because of pushing back into objective. But the zones and clan blitz, you can push the objective with your team very well. You can vac, ink vac the clan blitz push so your teammates can score and still live even if they're being shot at. Um, zones you can shield to make sure the opponents can't walk into the zone. Both very helpful things for those modes. But otherwise, those are the only modes Tentabrell is worth pushing in. Okay. Let's talk gear for just a second. Um, so, so that, you know, I'm getting used to how I'm going to be moving and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. What do you generally run, you know, roughly, at least? I'm probably not going to be able to, you know, duplicate your build, but I can at least approximate yeah. it as close as I can. Well, first off, never use charge up for ink back. <laughs> Special ink charge, back yeah. Is, <laughs> this is, ink this is, is my splash build. This is my splash build. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is not say. what I was thinking. <laughs> ink, ink back is definitely the worst special in the game right now. And uh, for Tentabrella, with how many crazy things, with how many bombs, and how fast the shield can get shredded, you definitely want a lot of QR. Um, QR, at least two mains, or a main and three subs, a main and two subs. Uh, it's it's nice to have that as a safety net for how many times you'll be dying to just crazy weird things. Okay. Um, do you recommend um, Ninja Squid? I'd say Ninja Squid is okay for Tentabrella. Some Japanese top players use it and have Swim Speed and Ninja Squid on with Stealth Jump. I personally think that QR is better because that is what I practiced in Splatoon 2, but there is a niche for it in 3 because you can swim around behind people very easily. Okay. So looking at the build that I have right now, would you say that like the, um, the Japanese players who run Ninja Squid would run more swim speed than this then? Yeah, way more. They want to pretty much negate the okay. Ninja Squid effect. Gotcha. So this is a weird little hybrid of the two ideas. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I think the most common build is... Come back QR or come back on the okay. hat and then QR on the shirt and object shredder on the shoes. I can probably because that. uh splash wall, if you don't know, shreds the tentabrella shield completely. So if you have object shredder on, the object shredder will affect how you're shooting. So if you th throw out your wall, if you throw out your shield and then shoot the opposing wall while your shield runs into that wall. Um, your shield will live the splash wall. So, object shredder is a very nice thing to have. Okay. I think we'll go with this for the time being. Yeah, that works, that works. Okay. Um, so, I think... Mechanically, like, the approach to fights here is something that I've always struggled with on the Tentabrella, because when I'm fighting against it, and I'm, like, playing against someone who I, you know, I can tell knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. I can understand that there are, like, these very small and discreet windows that I have to do things before I'm, you know, going to, they're just going to have a shield up, 
or they're going to be able to get close enough to one shot or something. I feel like constrained a lot. But when I try mm -hmm. to, to play the weapon myself, I often find myself leaving these like big like one second windows for someone to just shoot me where they can literally splat me the entire way through. So like how do you position yourself relative to an opponent and like what is your kind of flow chart for just a, approaching an, a neutral engagement that keeps you from like leaving yourself vulnerable? Okay, so you see the wall behind you? Try to I mean, go behind that yeah, behind, try to go behind that wall. Um, you can open your, you can shoot the wall, and then open your shield behind that wall, and then while your shield is open, angle yourself to the left side a little bit. It can kind of jump out while the shield is open. And it doesn't need to be so far like angled. You can just kind of jump out while the shield's open, and it still goes straight, and you're still protected the whole time. Yeah. Okay. So I'm finding something to corner peek, kind of like a, a splatling will. Yeah, and kind then, of. Am I just like so, taking a shot and then backing back up if that shot doesn't hit? or? Well, you'll be protected when the shield goes out then. And you can move up with that shield and swim out with it, go for a shot. If okay. someone's close to you, you can maybe hit a one shot. Or you can back up behind the block because you still have cover behind you. Gotcha. So I either so I launch the shield every time, but then I decide whether or not whether or not I want to swim with it based on how my opponents react. Yes, a huge part of Tentabrella is positioning and deciding what type what fights to take because you can swim with the shield a lot, but based on the QR I mentioned earlier, the quick respawn, you're gonna die a lot if you go in with the shield every time. So you have to decide whether it's worth it to go with the shield if you have to back up so you can get you know. Let your shield regenerate and then go for it again. It just depends on the situation. Okay. So I think what might be helpful then is to go into a game and see how I screw all of that up and then talk about it from <laughs> there when you have some more specific ideas of how I'm going to play it. Um, all right. So you said Clam Blitz is one of the modes where this can work? Yeah, Clam Blitz is perfect. All right, awesome. I asked the Tentabrilla Discord about some of the things they wanted to hear covered. So, I'm thinking I probably set up around the right side and try to push through right. Yeah, it depends on pretty much how you want to play. Because this right side, this far bottom right side, uh, is a great spot for a beacon. Because it takes the opponents a long time to go around here and to kill that beacon. Man, that beacon is really expensive. And if you, if you open your map there, while the beacon is there, you can see the people in the top right snipe area because of the beacon's ability to echolocate pretty much people on the map. So I, I I find myself putting down beacons to see where people are on the map quite a lot as a battle tactic. So mm -hmm. there, I just kind of lost track of that player. I, like, I noticed they were there and was like, oh, wait a minute, that might be a problem. Yeah, and you're at a range where you couldn't really one-shot with the Brella, but the roller could kind of get the jump on you because he has high ground. So, that didn't go down. again, with the positioning is definitely the most important part of tent. Yep, put yourself in one shot range. Great. Oh, and now awesome. you know that there's two dead, so you can move up under the charger. And you can even place a beacon underneath the right side if you want to see the people on snipe. Yep, helping your teammate with the shield. It's very good. And personally, I'd move up on the left side now because there's an opportunity for you to place a beacon there to get your team in. Gotcha, okay. So you're thinking a lot more around the beacons. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was literally are... paint, I didn't attempt to paint, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely an accident shot. Let's see if we can get in this way. Oh boy, there's some uh, Alright. A uh, big part of. <laughs> nice kill. Using the VAC is if you throw out your shield first when pushing into the objective, and then you VAC behind the shield, I mean, it's just a riot shield with a vacuum behind it. It's really hard to stop. Um, and if your team plays off of it, it'll go well. Gotcha. So I actually want to double them up. It's not like one is an. Uh, uh a reserve in case one of them fails 
You actually oh, yeah. want to use both at the same time. Oh yeah, and that's a good beacon spot as well. But throwing out the shield and having the vac behind it is a really good thing. Because the vac would be painting for you, or the, the shield would be painting for you, in front of you, and then the vac would be moving uh, with the shield. I've gotten myself into a little bit of a, a predicament. Predicament. Here. Yeah. Should be able to <laughs> okay. win that. Nice. It go. works, it works. He's probably going to dodge, so... Yeah, that's oh, a big thing about that. Uh, camping off. jumps is pretty difficult because you have to time the starting to shoot since the initial lag of the shot. Okay. So you have to time shooting and when they land. It's not like a shooter where you can just hold down the ZR button when they land. But now you have three down, so you can move up and shield this left side area with all these clams. So I'd shield since I know they're gonna drop. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can you can just go for the clams, but if you shield, uh, I saw that on the top of the screen, they were respawning at that time, so I would have shielded. So I would shield against the wall, which means the shield would just bounce against the wall continuously, and I would have more time to live and throw in my clams. Oh, it didn't launch. No. I thought it was going to launch in time and I was going to be able to ride up the wall. Yeah. Well, funny thing about this map is the tent actually can ride the wall. If you go to the left side and then throw your shield on the left wall in mid, uh, the shield will just ride through it and you can walk through. So here would be a good time since the charger was so close. You can just stand inside the shield and follow it to try to get the kill. Okay. Being inside the shield is definitely a, a huge part of tent, because, I mean, sure you can die to just some random bomb, but having the ability to be protected while also getting close for a one-shot is, you know, tent's main thing. Oh, this is a mistake. Almost worked out. Got a little stall. I mean, you guys are winning right now, so... I need to get over the the um, the urge to release the ZR button when mm -hmm. I'm in trouble, and mm -hmm. just like keep holding it down. So I can yes, yes, yes. The shield out. That's a that's a big part. You got to get that shield out. There's quite a lot of times where you can die through the shield because of the Nintendo's online, but getting that shield out is most important. Okay, so. Big things there were play around the shield more instead of just like launching it and mm -hmm. and hoping I don't know and being scared. Um, yeah. Use more beacons and use the shield to get in one shot range and actually go after people. That's perfect. Okay. Um, so. So I'm going to be doing yep. a lot of this. Yep. And then where, Getting, where's, yep. where's my one-shot range at, effectively? Because I know it's just based on what pellets hit, but... Well, yeah, it's based on the pellets. Um, but essentially, if you in the training room, you can put your crosshair exactly on it, and then keep shooting. And you'll see that sometimes it kills, but sometimes it doesn't from this kind of range. Because some of the pellets won't hit exactly. Oh my god. <laughs> so, for a majority of the time, you want to make sure that you're within, like, at least one of these uh, bars, you call them. You want to be super close to the opponent, like, touching, pretty much. Yeah, like that range. Because that's the only range to effectively kill, to make sure that all the bullets hit, and you can hit the shotgun blast all the time. Because that's what it is, the brellas are all shotguns, so you want to be close. I don't know if I explained it well last time, but placing down the beacons on the map. If you place down a beacon and then open your map, you're able to see the people close to the beacon. So a lot of the time when I'm having to play retake with the tent, um, you can place a beacon down before you move in. And, you know, if you're, if you're close to a wall of some sort, if you're behind protection, you can just place down that beacon, see where people are, and 
nine times out of ten, if you're playing tent and the enemy team has a lethal bomb, they can just bomb you if you drop with your shield. So if you place the beacon and you can see that they're sharking you, you can sometimes get the drop on them and kill them for and punish them for being so close. Another Brello, wow. And they put us on the same team. That's just cruel. <laughs> Okay, so here you could shield your mid, or you could swim up and shoot. I mean, that works, you have pain. Um, on this map, I typically would want to make sure I have a vac and then jump up on the right side and shield that kind of grating area and then vac so my team can move up through. Getting, getting tent on tent is kind of difficult. But you see now, since you didn't launch the shield beforehand, you don't have the paint or protection to move up yourself. I see, okay. So you have to rely my, I'm having to walk them. over that, at the top of that, so that's yeah. how you use it. Okay, that makes a so lot of sense. Could, they could just paint over you or, you know, attack you by themselves. The shield gives you your protection. You don't have to rely completely on the team. Oh, perfect. I was trying to bop them. Good work. There we go. Nice. So if you place that beacon down again on that right side, and then open your map, you'll see the people over there. It has that kind of range? Oh, it just keeps getting taken out by the wave breakers, what happens. The wave breaker, yeah, yeah. So the wave breaker one-shots that? Jeez. Yep. We get no breaks. <laughs> And you could check your map to see if anyone's close on that beacon, and you know that no one's there. So, so how big up. is the the beacon's like detection range? Um, it's fair. It's sizable. It's not like enough to where, you know, it's completely busted. It's not all of me. So, because your team has been up there for quite a while, you know, unveiling their positions. So it's not just the beacon doing all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I always figured it was like. Maybe like an ink vac explosion size kind of thing. It oh, seems no, like it's way it's, bigger it's, than that. It's way bigger than that. Maybe like, I'd say it might even be bigger than the full size ink vac. Is it like? Are we are we talking like um, a booyah bomb size? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm. It might be. It might be around that size. Maybe we can do a, a little. Oh, a little test after. I am dead. Uh, yeah, a little test afterwards and like recon or something. Mm -hmm. And right there, you saw one of the main weaknesses of ten. If there is more than one area the opponents can come from, uh, you're very, very much so doomed. So you can only protect yourself from one side. Inconsistent damage values galore. Okay, maybe I harped too much on the beacons. <laughs> you don't need to bring out all the time. It's just, I think usually if you have one down in mid is usually good okay. enough. It just helps your team to get back to mid. Your team isn't going to oh be Oh my god, launch! <laughs> I've tried to launch it twice and then I just ran out of it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to go too fast. Now it's not even important to have it, because... Oh. Nope. But, now you're going to protect your friend as he shoots. Yep, perfect. And then the ball will be able to move up, since you back the front. And you pretty much got the squish. That, 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 that counts, right? <laughs> yeah. So about this shield, it goes... You shot it so far, like, forwards, that when it moves forwards, it's so far into their base that they could just drop in the front and attack the teammates behind you. So, if you're not careful, um, your big riot-sized shield might just end up not working, because if it's too far behind them, they're just going to ignore it. 
So you have to okay. make sure you're shooting it far enough back that they have to pay attention to it. Like here. If you shoot, he has to pay attention to it. And he can't quite leave it. But now, since it's a bit far forwards, he could have gone around the right side, but he decided to stay behind the box. And since the shield is giving you paint to move up, you have, you're in one shot range of the opponents. And your teammate moved up with it. Cool. It worked out. It's it's throwing my, my head for a loop because I'm I usually play short range shooters. I'm usually just like, alright, time to go. Yep. R right now. And yep. playing at this pace, it's difficult for me to both figure out you know, okay, I've got my shield launched, I've got my vac ready, so I'm gonna go and take this position. Like, by the time I get all of that figured out in my head, it's there's a lot of time passing, and some of it is definitely inefficiency on my end. I think part of it is also just the weapon is really slow. Yes, um, the weapon is incredibly slow. So, like... This thing's pretty much like playing chess. You have to think about your movements compared to shooters, where if you run in and have good mechanics, you'll win. So you, you can just basically be anything, because I'm just going to be, like, opening the map and seeing, like... We'll have you like inch forward bit by bit so that you're until yeah. you're like close enough that we can tell exactly where the, the edge of the range is. Mm -hmm. Oh, your title's sick. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if there's going to be a better one. I keep getting all these new ones and I'm like, that's neat, but also I have this. Yeah, you have that. I still haven't gotten the Tentarelli user. Oh, wow. I think those are random because I got like Glugadooly's user and I do not play that weapon. Oh, yeah. They're definitely random. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if you so... play from there, you should see me for quite a while. Like, yeah, I can see you from back there. Standing behind here. You just or vanished. In the middle so... of zone. Yeah, I'm watching a screen share. So if someone's close to this wall, you can see them. Or more importantly, if someone wants to like flank you flank? over here, okay. you can just easily see it coming in. Um, I think How far back right can there. you go in the right alleyway there before I lose track? Oh, it's like this box, I think. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so that's that's everything that's relevant to that flank then. Uh, go out further to my right, your left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I mean, not, not quite this box. Once you get but... behind that box, you do vanish. But at any time you're trying to actually come in. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, I think, you know, defense beacons aren't too helpful, but mm -hmm. I think retake beacons are way more helpful. So if you come over here. Uh, and place a beacon on top of this tent. So on your retake, you can place a beacon right here. And then if anyone is just, you know, sharking under under your right side, under, you know, still under here, you'll be able just to see all of it. And if you want to drop where you are right now to under 10, like shield this, uh, a quite a normal retake for this map is, you know, placing a beacon right here, checking if anyone's underneath you, then shooting this wall and shield, so you'll be able to be safe. The shield will drop, and you can drop along with it. Okay. And you and so you just up. time that with your the rest of your team pushing in left. Yeah, and then you get this position. You can kill anyone, you know, over here, and then again shoot the wall, jump out with the shield. All right. So you're kind of just owning one side of the map and letting your team own the other side. Interesting. Essentially. That's cool. Um, mm -hmm. So, what would you say? What would you say is a good uh, Tentabrella map or like map mode? Uh, right here. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's not it's not great for it, but nothing. I don't think anything in this game is great for Tentabrella, unfortunately, because Tentabrella really likes linear maps. Uh, so, if there's a ton of angles and a ton of things to look at and a ton of ways. To swim around the shield then this weapon will definitely suffer but if there's only like one way for the shield to go and if the shield's on right zone and that means they have to swim through right or swim through this left side of their zone mm -hmm. so again with the, the flank you know i can shield this and they're just completely locked off from that entire area so that's what it benefits most from 
So maps like uh, Flounder, on the other hand, if I yeah. shield the top, they can go underneath left, underneath right, you know, straight underneath the shield if they want to, so. So you're saying the better the maps get, the worse they get for Tentabrella. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a sad yeah, state. Macro was great, because I could just go anywhere I wanted. Okay. But, so, yeah. um... Say they just completely fix all of the latency issues and everything with Tent Shield. Um, mm -hmm. How much more viable do you say it becomes? Like, two more tiers. Three more tiers, at least. Uh, this weapon dies because of the said latency issues. Um, unfortunately, it's Nintendo has peer-to-peer -peer connection, so there's nothing they can really do about the shield being this way. It definitely feels worse than two somehow. I don't know how yeah. they made it feel. I don't understand worse. how that happens. <laughs> Same hardware, <laughs> new game, and the netcode is worse. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that's possible, but hey, man, Animal Crossing does. So. <laughs> um, with uh, so when you say like it goes up two or three tiers, are we saying it becomes like it goes from bottom tier to mid tier, or like where is that relative to the other weapons? I'd say mid-tier, okay. because, uh, I, as I mentioned before, TC and Rainmaker are just doomed for this weapon, because if the if the tower is coming around this way, and you're trying to defend, and you launch your shield, you know, into the tower, this won't, you know, go up onto the tower, it'll just whack the tower on its side, and as my one-shot weapon, unless I, you know, shoot the people on the tower, they could just stand behind the pole, or... I'd have to swim up onto the tower to hit a one shot, and that is incredibly difficult to do versus a you know a short range shooter of anything like this sort. Yeah, if you're like a as slow of a weapon as you are, mm -hmm. like just having the time to get up there, it's just not going to be good for defending it. Um, oh no! And then I figure Rainmaker, it's just too slow, right? Yeah. Again, like if you're trying to retake on Rainmaker, you can shield the front, but it'll get you know absolutely annihilated and. The shield itself won't give you any value, and then you'll be run down by opponents because you have no shield. Was, uh, I was just thinking, like, that whole process of, okay, here's how we're going to retake. First, we're going to put a beacon, then we're going to wait for the entire tent shield to approach, and then it's going to launch, and now we can move forward, right? Like, yeah. that yeah. is a process. That uh, That is a thing that takes a significant amount of time, whereas my process... If I am a 52 gal is, okay, I'm going to drop, I'm going to throw a wall, and now I'm in. <laughs> yeah, pretty um, much. So, you know, that that amount of, like, setup time, I think, is something that would be really hard to play around in a mode where your goal is to push up as fast as you can with the opening that you have. Because mm -hmm. a second is, like, four points or something crazy like that. Oh. And, you know, it's kind of the same as e-leader in a way where if you miss the shot on the objective then that's like the game right there mm -hmm. so yeah very yeah. aim intensive or er, rng intensive well aim, aim and aim, rng intensive aim and rng because you know if you shoot from super far away um you see where i am right now if i jump and shoot at this guy i just hit 65 damage but if i do it again I hit 34, and then I do it again, I hit 40, and that was 40 again. So it really just depends on where the bullets land. Are you jumping for a particular reason? I'm jumping because that lets the pellets go farther. Okay. If I jump, shoot, and then walk backwards, I'll end in the same spot I was. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm not hitting ahead. anything from here, but then when I jump, I did mm -hmm. hit 51. Yeah, and if you, you know, kind of move forward and then jump backwards, the range will go even farther. And so you, you, you do like a kind of squid roll backward kind of thing if you wanted. Well, I wouldn't squid roll backwards because, you know, that puts me in a vulnerable position still. But, you know, keeping people at max range with this weapon is definitely good. Because you mentioned the 52. 52 has this kind of range normally. Or a machine has this kind of range normally. So I need to make sure that I'm not in a vulnerable position. If like, my shield isn't out, then I need to make sure that they're not getting close to me. Okay. I never even knew about this as like a firing mode of the weapon. Just mm -hmm. like trying to chip people with these jump shots to keep them away. 
Oh yeah. That's good to know about. Um, another part of this, like, keeping people at bay is it doesn't do a lot of damage, and it's really hard to hit, you know, in the training room, right? And we're still hitting 17 damage like that. Mm -hmm. So, more so, when you're trying to help your team, you don't want to get damage on the opponent to, you know, get the kill. You more so want to paint where they're going. So, okay. if you know the opponent wants to swim closer to you, you know, you can shoot them and paint their feet. But if they want to swim away, it's more beneficial to shoot where they're going. So it locks out their ability to leave. So your opponent or your teammate can close the gap easier. I think this might be like a, a whole step in the, the process of engaging with this weapon that I've just not ever been familiar with. Because like, mm. my thought has always been like, okay, it takes this long to get the shield up to protect me. And then it yep. takes this long to launch the shield. How do I ever like get that up in time and it's that you're firing these shots from far away so that then you can transition into the shield coming out by the time you're on the ground and yes, then you have that ready to go and you can launch in from there that makes a lot mm -hmm. more sense to me yeah and when you're not at that kind of range you know you can usually want to use cover like this you know shield behind it jump out with the cover okay because, you know, the cover protects your inkling, then the shield protects your inkling. You can move with that. Cool. Okay, I want to try one more game now that I know that and see if I can get that to work. So are you aiming for basically, like, their head when you're going for this? Oh, it no, looks no. Like, it looks like it arcs and falls down. Uh, I usually aim for feet because um, it paints the ground faster and okay. allows the pellets to hit more of the hitbox. So like you're, you've actually got your reticle aimed at their feet. It's not like you're aiming to get the ink at their feet. It's that you're aiming the reticle at their feet. Essentially, because yeah. if I shoot, you know, around their head, the pellets might go around the head. If I shoot at the feet, then more pellets will hit the bottom of the character. Okay. And paint the ground faster so they cannot move. Gotcha. Giving me time to close the gap. any shield up and since there's paint there you can move through with the shield mm -hmm. right. we're hitting some shots and you see all the damage you're doing but it's not killing it's that inconsistent damage values oh that's so much smoother than trying to do that on the ground mm -hmm. and since you know he's there you can shield then back so now your teammate, you're this blaster behind you, can move in with this back. Well, Hopefully. I thought we were protecting him there. He didn't move in with it, but it allowed your team to kind of get in with it. Yeah, I'm not... <laughs> Those were uh, not the best shots. <laughs> At the end, you do have to hit the one shots. <laughs> it's that kind of weapon where in, with snipers, you have to hit the shot from far away, but with Tentabrella, you have to hit it super up close. Just have to hit the shot. Oh, I again thought it was gonna launch. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna take me a really long time to hold it down long enough to get that out. Oh yeah. I saw it and I opened the map again anyway. <laughs> Don't need the beacon all the time. I'm surprised it's not seeing him from that far away. Oh, I mean, that's that's a pretty good distance. I'd say generally most of the time it's okay to just drop down with the shield because you'll still be protected by the shield and then people will reveal themselves by just trying to kill you. Yup. Playing king. They are still in our base. I don't think he realizes that the push died. <laughs> okay. You're setting up push here. This guy's still in your base. He pretty much just painted his feet and his teammate cleaned up. That was good. Uh, you got beacons down in mid so you can kind of start pushing again. 
Then you have your back, so I'd shield. Oh, oh yeah, I, I, I was like, I'm gonna use the shield after this, and that's not how this works. Yes, but to Woo, see how you have like a single second of a not doing, not being protected. That's mm -hmm. the that's where the shield comes in. But that was a really nice shot with the back. Yeah, I was surprised they backed into it, but I'm still happy with how I aimed it. Mm -hmm. You pre well with the back, you have to shoot it where you think they're going to go. Yeah, that's a good point. Shooting it, shooting it where they are generally doesn't work unless uh, they're not looking. So. Great shield. Oh, I don't know where that came from. I I don't know either. I was watching. Must have been must have been coming up the wall, I guess. Yeah. But you see how this entire time, you know, you've died a few times here, but the push is still okay because you have the beacon sound in mid. Great kill. Now you back here. If you back the front area where your team is, then you can move up with the football and score. Oh, they missed! Except you missed. <laughs> but you kind of see the intricacy of like backing your teammate in and using that shield to take space. Man, that is going to get shredded like crazy. Yep. Alright, well... <laughs> I feel a lot better about how I was playing it, at least. There are mm -hmm. definitely some kinks to work out there, but I'm I'm seeing the vision, at least, yes. of, of how that should work. Just using that shield to close space, using the vac to help your teammates, using the beacons to help your team out and uncover sharks. Is there any kind of trick to painting with this thing? It, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like I just press ZR enough times. Well, there actually is. Oh, okay. Um, I think with every weapon in this game, there's an optimal way to paint. You know the the reflux having the just tapping it a bunch of times paints a ton. Mm -hmm. But with this weapon, if you if you just shoot normally while not moving, and then you know that le that leaves a bunch of gaps. But if you reset, um, if you just shoot normally once and then jump forward and to the left. No, no, no! Don't, don't move the reticle. Just forward into the left without changing oh, the direction. Okay. So jump forward to the left. Uh, I wouldn't here. So not, not so much that I'm leaving gaps in between each line. Yeah, don't go in a squid form. Yeah, perfect, perfect. And now you're not leaving gaps, and you don't have to go forwards both times. You can stay in one spot, jump forwards, jump backwards, jump forwards, jump backwards. And it covers all the spots you missed. Okay, so jump forwards, so. jump backwards, jump forwards, jump backwards. All right. And that that covers like a lot of the gaps because if you're just walking, you can just walk sideways and then spam ZR. You're gonna see how much paint is like really gone mm -hmm. from you know doing that. Yeah, some big gaps there. So we're using the jumping to stay mobile, but keep. In the paint out. Yes. Okay, that's, Especially that's being cool. <laughs> so you don't die. Alright, that's like a billion things that I didn't know about this weapon. So, oh, there, awesome. There's a lot, unfortunately. There's too much to this weapon. The most fundamental thing about this weapon is thinking about what fights you're going to take. I mentioned it earlier, but when you launch your shield, you have to think, is this shield worth swimming into and trying to get a kill with? Or is it worth just letting the enemy team be distracted by the shield and then waiting for another one. So you really have to think about your positioning and where you want to launch those shields from. All right, would you ever like, um, is there a position where you would put the shield out and then just decide to abandon launching it? Oh yes, very much so. Um, in a fight, if I'm, if I shot someone and I put up the shield and then my teammate is there. My okay, yeah. the enemy will assume, oh, he's just going to keep holding up the shield and be useless for a minute. I can focus on his teammate. If you put down the shield while your teammate is there and go for the kill yourself, then you can finish off the opponent before he kills your teammate. So like that, okay. So, yeah. They typically tend to or the opponent tends to 
not look at your shield when it's open. It's I th I think you know about the like umbrella flaring, right? Where you just shoot shield, shoot and then shield, shoot and then shield. Like the uh, the splat umbrella thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's that, but slower. <laughs> so like, if I do this shield and then jump, you can see that I'm moving quite a lot, mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to hit me while I'm moving like this. And if my shield's up for a second, and I move in a different direction, so jump, shield, and then move, then they'll look at the shield this way, and I move this way, and shoot. Uh, it's it's a definitely a game about mix-ups. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, really appreciate you being willing to, to show off your expertise here for the benefits of, of all of the gamers. I, yes. I ink back with you in solidarity. Um, if you were... So, if you were to just pull open Tier Maker right now and create a tier list, mm -hmm. um, where on that list is Tensabrella going? Is it absolute bottom? Are there some weapons that it's better than? Like, Because right uh, now the, the meme that, that I feel like is going around is everyone just puts all the three umbrellas on the bottom and then commences to actually make the tier list. But mm -hmm. is that actually true? Well, as I think, as Chara has said in the past, if you look at a few of his lists, uh, umbrellas are all bottom. Very, very, very depths of bottom. They are terrible. I say this as the number one tentabrella in all of the Western scene. Um, umbrella is terrible. So... <laughs> It is definitely bottom five of the game. Um, I think the only weapons worse than the umbrella are the pencil and the other umbrellas. So. <laughs> okay. So it's, bottom four then. <laughs> hmm? So the other umbrellas you would say are worse than this one? Um. Yeah, I think that spy umbrella and undercover are worse. Spy umbrella could be argued to be better, but it's just tough to use. Is there anything that you would like to uh, promote? Any, any promote. channels you got or anything like that? Any plugs? I, I've been playing Tentabrella and doing sick things with this weapon for around three or four years. So if you check out my YouTube, there's a bunch of montages from Splatoon 2. And I'll be starting up those montages again with Splatoon 3 coming soon. Sick. And All right. We got Twitter. new videos to look for. Yes. New videos with Tentabrella coming soon. And my Twitter is xshadowin. I am, again, the only Tentabrella player in the entire Western scene to hit 2870 with this weapon in X rank. So there's that. And then I also stream my runs, or my runs, my ranked experience with this weapon on Twitch. So if you want to see me struggling with this weapon and how crazy it is, then you can check out all those. And that's also xshadowin on Twitch? Yes, uh, xshadowin on Twitter. Shadowwind on YouTube and Shadowwind underscore SPL on Twitch. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was a pleasure.